Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here, and today I am going to be talking about foods that I like to store, that store indefinitely, and some foods that I like to store that just have a longer shelf life. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Tori. I make videos all about preparedness, and we like to talk about doing that on a budget and in a positive way. So if you like that kind of thing, definitely hit the subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let's get right into the video. Okay, so I snuck down here and I'm kind of using most of my long-term food storage as a backdrop. Of course, I need this room lit so you can be able to see me in the video, but the first rule of thumb, if you're keeping long-term food storage, I would suggest storing it in a cool and dark place. That is something I suggest with most of your preps, but when it comes to long shelf life, you're definitely going to want to keep light away from that and any warm elements. So what I like to do is put a light tight curtain on top of that, but I would suggest maybe finding some sort of MRE box or some sort of ammo box to just keep everything light tight and then underneath something. But they look nice displayed on a shelf, right? So that is why they're there. I have several different ways that I like to store long-term food storage, but I have a trusty little list here and I wanted to go over some foods that I like to store. Of course, there are some on the list that I haven't mentioned and I want you to drop them in the comments below if you store long-term food storage. The first one is going to be honey and it's not just any honey. It is low local raw honey that you can source that you trust. There are a lot of people out there keeping bees. I would love to be one of them. That is total goals for me on our new little homestead when we move back, but honey is a great one. You can use it for a variety of things. We use honey for our immunity, but it tastes good too, right? So honey's a great one to store. We cook with it. It's just natural and good for you. So honey is a big one. I'm going to attempt to go rapid fire through this list. I am in this funk where I have people complaining that I talk too fast and then I have people complaining that I talk too slow. So I'm trying my best. I know I'm not going to please everyone. I can only be just myself, but I will try and get through this list in a more rapid way. The next thing on the list is going to be rice and it's not just any kind of rice. You are just going to want standard white rice. You are going to want to store that in mylar or you could suck the oxygen out of those jars behind me. It really depends on what you want to do there. I've shown how I do all of my long-term food storage. I will link that video. It is in my emergency preparedness playlist and you want to throw an oxygen absorber in there and then just label it and date it. So rice is a good one. It's very inexpensive. It is on the food shortage list. So that would be one to keep on the shelf and it is filling. So that's a big one that I keep in my long-term food storage. Next on the list is going to be salt. Salt. You can do so much with salt. I suggest storing Celtic sea salt. It is pure salt. It is good for you. I add salt to my water to remineralize it, but obviously salt is great for seasoning food. You could also cure meats with salt. I want to hear your favorite way to use salt. That is unique in the comment box down below. Of course, I love salt, but you know, too much of it is not the best for you. Next on the list is going to be sugar, and that is just going to be pure sugar. I store cane sugar. I have heard people get really angry about that in the comments. Uh, some people just store white sugar but cane sugar has always worked for me. From my research, I think that you can do that, but it's up to you. When you are storing sugar, you are not wanting to put an oxygen absorber in there, so just get it in mylar and get it sealed and then go from there. Or again, you could store it in these larger jars. Sometimes I do that, but honestly, we don't use a lot of sugar because we use sugar alternatives like honey and maple syrup. Next on the list is going to be alcohol, and you don't really want any flavored alcohol. You want something pure, so I I always suggest 100 proof vodka or you could find some sort of whiskey. So alcohol, you can barter with it. You could of course drink it, but my favorite thing to do with alcohol is make tinctures out of herbs that I have from the garden. But if you don't have a garden, there are so many places online and locally that you can source good quality herbs and flowers to use as medicinals. I promise you there are so many options out there for you when it comes to your ailments. Don't just think to look towards the pharmaceuticals. So using alcohol to get that plant's medicinal properties into tincture form is a big thing in my household. I don't do a lot of videos on it just because not a lot of people watch it, but if you want to see more in-depth videos when it comes to those, I am going to be doing
doing a batch here soon and that will probably be our last batch until we move back to Pennsylvania. Next on the list there are a few on here that are going to create some conversation in the comments and I want it to be just that. If you have a differing opinion that's okay we can talk about it as long as we are level-headed and we are not using dangerous language. So the one that I always put on this list is going to be freeze-dried food. Now indefinitely I'm not sure but it should last you up to 30 years and a lot of these items are going to be indefinite but 30 years is a good mark to think about when you are thinking about storing long-term food storage. So freeze-dried food. If you have a freeze dryer, awesome. If you do not have a freeze dryer, there are ways to get freeze-dried food. You could look into local places. I've seen freeze dryers used as like a renting system. So you could go to someone's home or you could even drop off your own food and they could freeze dry it for you. But it depends what your situation is. Freeze-dried food. Don't be afraid of it. Store it in mylar. Store it in a jar and you should be just fine. Next on the list is going to be baking soda, baking powder. I know you can't just straight up eat it, but there are so many uses for baking soda and baking powder and it stores indefinitely. When in doubt, you could use it for indigestion, which a lot of people do. And I enjoy using it for cleaning and I also put some in my fridge for odor and things like that. Speaking of odor, you could use it to make a natural deodorant if you wanted to or you could use it in your garden to deter bugs. I tried it last year and it actually worked. Next on the list is going to be dried beans and I have a ton of them right above me here. My favorite is Pinto because I have a local farm that I go to up the road and they sell it in bulk. And that is something that I wanted to talk about when it comes to long-term food storage. If you can get these products in bulk, that is going to be your best bang for your buck. Of course, there are local stores like Costco and Sam's Club, but I always love getting my bulk orders at Azure Standard. I am not sponsored by them. I just absolutely love them as a company. And there are so many local drop-offs in your area. If there is not, reach out to the company and I'm sure they can set something up for you. I don't know if they still offer their shipping to home option. I haven't really looked into that because it was a bit expensive and I love the community aspect of the local drop points. So you go unload the truck together, chit chat, you know, there's a lot of homeschooling families there. So it's just nice to have that sort of community. So if you're looking into something, look into Azure Standard or look into your local farms and ask if they sell in bulk. That is what I did at the Pinto Bean Farm and we just worked out a little barter system and now I get my beans in bulk and they get various items from my myself and my family. We have a homestead like I talk about, but it's a backyard homestead and we are learning. We are soaking up all of the information we can before we move back home to PA. We are looking into a large plot of land and hopefully to become more self-sufficient and perhaps start a little community back home. So moving on from dried beans and bulk food storage, I am going to go into home canning and this is going to also create another conversation in the comments below. Essentially, if you are a home canner, you get this, but if you are canning beans, for instance, they should last you indefinitely or 25 to 30 years. They absolutely will lose certain flavors and maybe even the texture, but home canned food should last you a very long time, especially if you store it properly. So I suggest home canning to just about everybody I know. I suggest starting out with water bath canning. See if you enjoy it. For me, it's very therapeutic and I love showing the kids how to garden from seed, bring in that harvest, and preserve it for later. It's something that brings me joy, and it's a skill that I've always wanted to pass down to my children. And then I did put on some honorable mentions into the list because I know some people will ask, and that's going to be cornmeal, that's going to be pasta, and it's going to be flour. According to those three-letter agencies, they should be able to last you five to eight years, but I would bump it to 10 plus. That's just me. Of course, when you're looking at any of these foods in the very far future, smell the food, look at it. If it doesn't look good to you, if it doesn't smell good, that's not something that you can eat. But honestly, a lot of the food out there can go past its expiration, especially when you are storing in bulk and you're doing it in the correct way. Some other ones that I thought about was peanut butter just because it's relatively inexpensive, different cooking oils, spices, ramen noodles, milk powder, and freeze-dried dairy. All of those items I'm going to group together in the five to eight year category. It depends on each item and what ingredient is in that item. Of course, there's going to be so many preservatives loaded into those processed foods, so they might be able to last indefinitely, but I would 
would not suggest investing in keeping those things on your shelves. Of course, any food is better than none. If you are going to make this investment into your future, I encourage you to think of the health aspect as well. So perhaps look into whole foods that you can easily cook up or easily store. Alrighty, my friends, in the spirit of keeping it short and sweet, that is all I had on my list today. Of course, there are some items that I didn't mention, but I wanted to mention some of my favorites. Please let me know in the comments down below some of your favorite things to store indefinitely. And if you feel comfortable, let us know about your setup. A lot of us come from different walks of life. We live in varying places with different climates. We live in homes. We live off grid. We live in apartments. There's just so many people out there that live differently than us. So if you ever are curious, definitely look in the comments below. There is so much knowledge down there in the community. And I just really love what we've built here. I don't say it enough. So I'm grateful for each and every one of you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I try and get back to everybody in a timely manner. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, email me at mountainmamaliving at gmail.com. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye y'all. We're from a different star Flying over streets and all